Hi, I'm Dr. Brendan Byrne, Medical Director of Lifestyle Rx, and I'm here to talk to you about an emerging concept of type 2 diabetes subtypes and the potential for a personalized medicine approach to diabetes. Let's go back to the definition of diabetes. Diabetes is a condition where your body does not regulate blood sugars properly. And this happens because your body does not make enough insulin. Remember, insulin is the hormone your body uses to store and use glucose. If we go a bit deeper, we can see that there might be two reasons why your body does not make enough insulin. One, beta cells in the pancreas cannot make or release enough insulin. And or two, insulin doesn't work properly. Is this combination of these two factors, pancreatic beta cell capacity versus insulin resistance that determines all forms of diabetes? In fact, we can think of blood sugar control as the balance between the pancreas' ability to produce insulin and the resistance that insulin faces in the body. In type 1 diabetes, we see that there's minimal to no insulin release that leads to abnormal blood sugars. Insulin resistance only makes things worse. In type 2 diabetes, as insulin resistance develops, pancreatic beta cells compensate by releasing more insulin, and blood sugars can remain normal. How long this goes on for depends on the pancreas. At some point, insulin resistance overwhelms pancreatic beta cell capacity and blood glucose levels rise. If pancreatic beta cell capacity decreases, even if it's still normal, high insulin resistance can lead to abnormal blood sugars. In most forms of type 2 diabetes, the pancreas can no longer release enough insulin to overcome the insulin resistance resulting in elevated blood sugars. Medications can compensate and help restore some of the balance to improve a hemoglobin A1c, but they don't necessarily affect the underlying process. But not all type 2 diabetes is the same. In fact, recent studies confirm at least five different subtypes. Let's take a look at them. In subtype 1, representing about 6% of type 2 diabetes, we see an autoimmune process that is similar to type 1 diabetes. This is called autoimmune insulin deficiency, or LADA, latent autoimmune diabetes of adulthood. Insulin production is severely decreased. 90% of patients are GAD antibody positive. These patients have difficulty tolerating carbohydrates without insulin, and they often have normal BMI to minimal or no insulin resistance. The second subtype is severe insulin deficiency, and it accounts for 18% of type 2 diabetes cases. It's very similar to subtype 1, except there are no detectable antibodies. Clinically, these patients present similarly in that their ability to tolerate carbohydrates is very limited, and they often have normal BMI with minimal to no insulin resistance. The third subtype is quite different. This one is marked by severe insulin resistance, and it's accompanied by elevated insulin release, often 150 to 250 percent of normal. These patients have a higher BMI because of that higher circulating insulin. Remember, insulin is a storage hormone, and increased insulin leads to more fat storage. The abnormal blood sugars in these patients come late as the pancreas can compensate for a long time. 15% of type 2 diabetics fall into this severe insulin resistance category. The fourth subtype we see is called weight-related insulin resistance. Here we see more moderate levels of insulin resistance accompanied by moderately increased insulin production, usually 100 to 150% of normal. These patients are often diagnosed with diabetes earlier, around 45 to 55 years of age, and they have an excellent response to weight loss. This subtype represents 22% of type 2 diabetics. The fifth and final subtype we see is called age-related insulin resistance. It is the most common subtype with 39% of diabetics falling into this category. Here we see moderate insulin resistance accompanied by minimal pancreatic beta cell compensation. These patients present later, 65 years and onwards, hence the name age-related, and this subtype is very responsive to weight loss and exercise. If we look at this across the five different subtypes, two of the subtypes are insulin deficient, and three are insulin resistant. Where insulin resistance is dominant, evidence suggests that remission is possible. While 75% of patients fall into the insulin resistant subtypes, our data shows that 91% of patients have significant insulin resistance, that, if reversed, would allow their diabetes to go into remission. The 4 plus 2 strategy, with our 12-week behavior change curriculum, focuses on decreasing the insulin resistance caused by hepatic fat. So this is why we see such a high rate of improvement in our program. But when we look at these different subtypes, there's a special opportunity to personalize the approach. 
With subtype 1, the first thing that we have to address is any insulin resistance that's present, as this will only worsen blood sugar control. Because these patients have decreased carbohydrate tolerance, continuous glucose monitors are essential to help them understand which carbs will spike their blood sugars. Exercise is important, and especially after eating can help control blood sugars. Muscle movement allows for glucose absorption without the requirement of insulin, and this can be very impactful. Increasing muscle mass can also improve glycemic control. Finally, anything that dampens inflammation may slow the autoimmune process that will be helpful for this subtype. For subtype 2, it's similar to subtype 1. Any insulin or insulin resistant must be addressed. CGM again is essential so that these patients can understand what carbohydrates they can or cannot eat. Exercise, especially after eating, is going to make a difference, and again we want to increase their muscle mass. For severe insulin resistance, the third subtype, it may be difficult to get weight loss started due to the high level of insulin. After improving nutrition quality, we may need a GLP-1 to get weight loss started. Glucose levels tend to normalize relatively quickly, but it takes a lot longer to resolve insulin resistance. In subtype 4, weight-related insulin resistance, these patients are very responsive to lifestyle changes. Hemoglobin A1c will improve as weight loss improves insulin resistance. And once below the personal fat threshold, they may continue to improve even if weight is plateaued. Finally, in age-related insulin resistance, these patients also improve with weight loss. Muscle insulin resistance likely plays a larger role in this subtype, so exercise plays a key role. Increasing muscle mass and improving muscle health will help. Weight loss improves insulin resistance, but we need to ensure that the weight loss is not at the expense of muscle mass loss. So the bottom line here is that most people will improve by reversing insulin resistance, and individual variability is still significant even within these subtypes but this offers us a glimpse at a personalized medicine approach for type 2 diabetes. Thanks for listening to this video from Lifestyle Rx. Just a reminder that Lifestyle Rx offers a 12-week online program to help you reverse type 2 diabetes. This program is free and covered by provincial healthcare in BC, Alberta, Ontario. Learn more and sign up today at lifestylerx.ca.